Adam Sisman and I spent years uh, collecting material for this book. I, uh, some of it material is arrayed in these black wing binders that I've got behind me. Uh, much else is in uh, an archive in Oxford. And I thought I'd weed some extracts from the letters which show Hugh in, in perhaps unexpected mode. In 1961, a Sunday newspaper uh, sent Hugh to cover the trial of the Nazi war criminal Adolf Eichmann in Israel, where, where Eichmann had been kidnapped from South America. He wrote a wonderful sequence of letters from that time, and I'm going to quote from one sent at that time by Hugh to his stepson. I went this evening to a very moving ceremony. Today is Holocaust Day, the day of remembrance for the Jews murdered by the Nazis, and there was a service in the open air on Mount Herzl, just outside the city, with a majestic view of the hills of Judea. Several thousand people gathered there. There were the makings of a wonderful pageant, with the mountains and the darkening sky and the torchlight. But of course the Jews were no good at that. In their central European dark clothes, with their ragged discipline and croaking loudspeakers, they made everything aesthetically third weight. And yet, this made the whole affair more moving. I felt that other people would have done wonders with the stage properties, but they would have lacked the terrible tragedy which made the whole ceremony, in this case, so real. They sang, in Hebrew, Psalm 3 and other psalms, and then a rabbi read that strange chapter of Ezekiel about the wilderness of dead bones. I suddenly realised, as he was reading it, in Hebrew of course, but I had a crib, how incredibly apposite it was. In 1930, say, that extraordinary chapter, it's chapter 23, would have seemed mere gibberish. The valley of infinite dry bones, which were reanimated by the voice of the prophet and responded to the voice of God, saying, O oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. But now these words are an exact image of what happened in the 1940s. The mountains of charred bones in the extermination camp and the foundation of the state of Israel. Then we had the prayer of remembrance for the victims of Nazism. As it was being said, I was suddenly aware of a gentle, gentle murmuring noise and realised that half of the thousands of people there were in tears. For after all, there can scarcely have been a family of immigrants which did not lose half its members in the extermination camps. There were under two million Jews in Israel and six million were exterminated. I found it very harrowing, and the thought that Eichmann, the man who calmly organised the whole system of extermination, was actually being tried in Jerusalem at that time, and that his lawyer was calmly arguing that he was entirely guiltless, all guilt which was never his anyway, having been washed away by a cash payment, made the whole episode particularly bizarre.